In the world of vehicle design, innovation and bold ideas can sometimes lead to remarkable creations, but they can also result in infamous blunders, too. From quirky concepts that miss the mark to ambitious designs that just fell flat, these automotive missteps serves as a reminder that even the most creative minds in the industry can occasionally miss the mark, leaving us with vehicles that have become legends in their own right, albeit for the wrong reasons. We're counting down the top 15 most infamous vehicle design blunders. Number 15. The Ford Pinto Fuel Tank it was marketed as the first subcompact car to be produced by Ford and sold in North America. The Pinto, it was built on an entirely new platform and was intended to take over the market from smaller vehicles that was in the late 1960s and early 70s made up of Japanese and European imports. Released in late 1970, it already had stiff competition from AMC and Chevrolet, but with Ford's track record, the Pinto was extremely popular, selling more than 100,000 units in just four months and selling more than 350,000 in 1971. There was, though, a major problem in the Pinto's design, and one that would become synonymous with blunders and potential safety problems. Due to changing regulations in the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards legislation, Ford had designed the Pinto in a similar way to other subcompact cars at the time, with the fuel tank sitting between the rear axle and the rear bumper. The problem, though, was that this made it particularly susceptible to leakage and fires in low-speed collisions when struck by a car from behind. When you watch this movie and a car seems to explode a little too easily when it's struck, this was something that was completely possible with the Pinto and led to serious concerns, especially for how many of them were on the roads. By 1974, there was already a petition for Ford to recall the vehicles, but this would only eventually happen in June of 1978, by which time the company had to call 1.5 million Pintos and 30,000 Mercury Bobcats that had a similar design back. With hundreds of millions of dollars in damages also handed out in court cases, this remains one of the largest and most dangerous recalls in U.S. automotive history. Number 14. The Nissan GTR Launch Control Failure First produced in December 2007, the Nissan GTR has become an incredibly popular model of car by the Japanese manufacturer, which, with the twin turbocharged V6 engine, is an extremely fun all wheel drive sports car and grand tourer. It was built on the company's new PM platform and included a number of features such as an active suspension system, dual clutch transmission, and a newly developed all wheel drive system, as well as what would become quite controversial electronic launch control function. This is used to help drivers accelerate from a standing start in as best a way as possible, and it was aimed at the owners who would be using their car on a track. But it also became commonly used at traffic lights on the road, but it hadn't been implemented as well as Nissan made it out. It's a technology that had previously only been seen in race cars, and the GTR was the first to combine launch control with a dual clutch transmission, and this put a huge amount of strain on the transmission itself. In race cars, this is fine because parts are constantly being replaced, but in a production road car, which is expected to be far more durable, this becomes a problem. There were countless stories of the transmission breaking, or in some cases, exploding, and this famously resulted in Nissan saying that if you use it too much, they'll take no responsibility for any damage to the transmission. In their opinion, using the feature too much was using it more than 10 times in total, making you wonder why they even bothered to include it in the first place. Of course, the issue was rectified in later models, but it just goes to show you that if you buy a car that includes technology for the first time, you never know just how reliable it'll be. Number 13. Chevrolet Cobalt Introduced in 2005, the Chevrolet Cobalt was a new design of compact car that was available as a coupe or a sedan, and it was also sold under the name of Pontiac G5 between 2007 and 9. While the design of the Cobalt wasn't really revolutionary, it was sold as a vehicle that did everything it does as well as possible, and that it was reliable and a trustworthy family car. The problem, though, is that Chevy didn't exactly test the components as well as they could have done, and several recalls became necessary in the following years. First, in 2007, 98,000 of the original Cobalt models had to be recalled because they failed safety standards in regards to padding within the vehicle's trim. Then, in 2010, the Cobalt became part of a recall of 1.3 million vehicles by GM because of the power steering systems that had been installed and begun to fail. 
In 2012, almost 41,000 were recalled because of a potential fuel leak. And then in 2014, GM was forced to recall more than 700,000 cobalts because of a serious fault that was discovered in its design. The ignition switch wasn't firm enough, and this meant that if too much pressure was put on the key, or even if the car went over a bump in the road, the ignition could rotate, and this would move it from the run position to off. As soon as this happened, the engine power would be lost, along with assisted steering, and the airbags would no longer function. With the risk of losing control over the vehicle, especially at high speeds, there was no choice but to recall as many as possible and stiffen up the ignition. Number 12. The Mercedes A-Class Moose Test Fail before its launch in 1997, there was a lot of hype surrounding the new Mercedes A-Class. It wasn't the most beautiful-looking vehicle released that year, but it was the company's first entry into the compact minivan market, and one of the first luxury vehicles targeted at that market. Now, the boxy design gave a huge amount of space in the interior, and removable seats meant that it was customizable in ways that many others aren't. And it also included a number of newly designed safety features, such as including a large number of airbags and a system that pushed the drivetrain under the passenger compartment if a front crash happens. All was looking great, but with such focus on these new features, the designers of the Mercedes A-Class seemingly forgot about other traditional safety features and the types of tests that were used to check how stable a car is. One test in particular originates in Sweden, and it's called the Moose Test. Essentially, it involves taking the car up to a high speed and then swerving to avoid an object in the road, such as a moose. During this test, when it was conducted by a Swedish magazine, the A-Class rolled over, which was obviously an immediate fail, and raised serious questions about its roadworthiness. Other magazines around Europe replicated the problem too, and while Mercedes initially tried to claim it wasn't an issue, they eventually had no choice but to recall the 2600 that had already been sold, and they paused the production until a solution could be found. Luckily, they realized that by stiffening the rear suspension and retrofitting ESP into the cars that already had been built and adding it as standard to the new ones, they could solve the issue. It would then go on to sell well, and when its successor came out in 2004, it and every subsequent Mercedes car passed the Moose test with flying colors. Number 11. Audi TT Mark I Spoiler Built between 1998 and 2023, the Audi TT is arguably one of the most famous and recognizable modern sports cars of all, and it's proved to be an incredibly popular model. Now available in many different versions, they've all retained the same basic form and shape, which has its origins and ideas that were put forward at the manufacturer as early as 1994 and displayed as a concept car in 1995. The first road version was a coupe that was released in 1998 and followed by a roadster in 1999, both of which were based on the Volkswagen Group A4 platform. Very little had changed from the concept version that had been shown years earlier, but despite it being high in demand because of its aesthetics and performance, reports soon started coming in of a major design flaw. There had been a series of crashes, in particular ones that were happening when the car was traveling faster than 112 miles or 180 kilometers per hour, and attempting to maneuver, like changing lanes or taking tight corners. The car's aerodynamic profile meant that there was a major reduction in handling and stability as it increased in speed. And while this wasn't much faster than the speed limits in most jurisdictions, it simply wasn't safe to let people still take to the roads in them, so a full recall was initiated in 1999. Audi made adjustments to the suspension and added either an ESP or ASR, but the most visible addition to the TT design was a rear spoiler, all of which eradicated the problems with loss of handling, and in the case of the spoiler, have become one of the recognizable design features of the TT ever since. Number 10. The Cadillac 468 Engine there's nothing quite like driving a car with a roaring V8 engine providing the power, but in most cases, there's no need to be using all eight cylinders at once, and it can be a waste of fuel. For Cadillac, this was a particularly pressing concern in the early 1980s, as during the 1970s, the American public had endured two oil crises that has seen fuel prices rise dramatically. Consumers were therefore far more aware of the fuel efficiency. So while still wanting to offer the full V8 experience, Cadillac introduced a new technology to overcome this problem. Known as the 468 engine, it's a concept that's commonplace today, but was at cutting edge of design back then. Essentially, it would use a computer to sense how much load there was on the engine, and when you're pushing down on the throttle, it will use all eight cylinders. 
but if you're idling or cruising at lower speeds, it'll deactivate some of the cylinders and instead use either six or four. The way it did this was by activating solenoids in the engine block that would lock down a certain rocker arm and prevent the intake and exhaust valves from operating, with air being trapped inside the cylinders that would act as a cushion. With a computer able to handle 300,000 calculations a second, there was real excitement when Cadillac first started selling models with this engine in 1981, but it wasn't long until problems began to develop. Drivers began to realize that there was a noticeable lag as more cylinders were being opened up, so the power wasn't as quickly available as they wanted, and in some instances, cylinders may have even become stuck shut. Cadillac developed at least 11 software fixes that owners had to return to their dealers to have their cars updated, but even then, they found the ride quality was terrible while operating on four cylinders. Despite how hopeful they had been, the 468 was, internally at least, seen as a failure. And while they likely planned on selling it for many years, the 468 engine was only available in Cadillac cars for a year before the company transitioned to an entirely different engine design in 1982. Number 9. Alfa Romeo Me Too Side Lights First revealed in 2008 and sold soon after, the Alfa Romeo Me 2 is a three-door super mini car that was targeted at people who mainly drive in urban settings. With a name that's a portmanteau of Milan, where it was designed, and Turin, where it was built, it soon became quite popular and would go on to sell almost 300,000 units over the next 10 years. Featuring a classic Alfa Romeo design, most choices were made in order to keep the price as low as possible, and this led to a couple of strange elements that had the potential to cause safety issues, mainly to do with the lights. When driving, you could use the indicator stalk to turn the headlights on or off, but it was a different story with the side lights. These, of course, will come on with the headlights in some circumstances, but are also designed to be used as parking lights, particularly when you've parked on the side of a road to act as a warning to other road users about the presence of your car. Alfa Romeo didn't exactly make it easy to activate these lights, though, and instead of them being a dedicated switch, you had to enter the vehicle's settings to turn them on. In fact, it took seven different button presses to turn the side lights on or off, which isn't exactly a convenient method. And to add to this complexity, they wouldn't activate if the engine was turned on. Most of the owners didn't even know that these lights was a possibility, and in many cases, they'd never been used. In later models, Alfa Romeo made it much easier to use these side lights, but the original versions remained the most complicated ones for using side lights of any car that's ever been mass produced. Number 8. The Ford Model Y Windshield Wipers Due to the more cramped design of cities and different ways of building highways, car manufacturers have historically designed alternative types of cars for sale in North America to those marketed to people in Europe. The Ford Model Y was the first car from the company that was specifically designed for markets outside of the US and was produced by Ford Britain and Ford Germany between 1932 and 37. Known in England as the Ford 8 because it produced 8 horsepower, it featured a Ford side valve engine and was made available in two-door and four-door versions. Several models were produced, and in order to try to take over the market, the company was able to offer the Tudor version of the Model Y for £100 in England, which was the first time a car like this was available in the country at that price. There were, though, a number of design compromises that were made for this to be possible, which even led one commentator saying that they wished Ford had instead charged £101 for the car if they made one vital improvement. The biggest design complaint was to do with the windshield wiper. It was powered directly from the engine and meant that when the car wasn't being pushed too hard, the wiper would work perfectly fine. But as the engine was pushed further, there was less power for the wiper and it would slow down. This became a particular issue when the car was going uphill, something the roads in England often do, and it would mean the wipers significantly slowed down and visibility would become practically non-existent in the frequent English rain. Needless to say, future models of Fords found a different way to power the wipers than how it worked on the Model Y, but even with this issue, it went on to sell 175,000 units and took more than 50% of the 8-horsepower market in the UK. Moving on to number 7, the Citroen C3 Pluriel Roof Rails. The Citroen C3 is a super mini car that was first sold by the French manufacturer in 2002, and following a successful response, a number of different updates and models have been released since. Between 2003 and 2010, the C3 Pluriel is a convertible model, it was available in five different variations, but the designers hadn't exactly thought of the practicality of their creation, which led to some issues in everyday use. Convertibles are, of course, best when there's nice weather, so you can lower the roof and take to the road, but you always need a backup just in case it rains. 
The problem with the C3 is that the roof was held in place with rails. To lower it, you needed to fully remove the rails, and there wasn't space in the car to store them. This means that you had to remove them and leave them at home before going out. But then, if you're caught out by the weather conditions, there wasn't a way to put the roof up and secure it in place to keep you dry. Even with the rails in place, however, the roof wasn't completely waterproof, and even the new C3 Pluriel was prone to leaking and would ruin the upholstery in the interior. Declared by most publications as being a completely useless car, especially in Europe, Citroen introduced a series of redesigns to overcome these issues, but then the damage to its reputation had already been done. The Pluriel was sold until 2010, but relatively few of them ever made it into the hands of paying customers, when it was finally withdrawn following the release of the second updated version of the mainline C3. Number 6. Matra Rancho Side Windows in collaboration with automaker Simca, the Rancho was a unique-looking car designed for the leisure activity market that was pitched as the perfect way to go on an off-road excursion. With a rugged look but a much cheaper price point than a comparative car from the competition, it was launched in 1977 and was extremely popular, eventually going up to sell 60,000 units. Various different versions were released over the years with the addition of features such as winches, undercarriage protection, and a limited slip diff, as well as a commercial version with no rear seats, which avoided French car tax. It also led to its much better known successor, the Renault Espace, but it could have gone very differently. The designers of the Rancho missed out on a key feature from the moment it first went into production, and had it become widely known, consumer confidence would have been shattered. The earliest versions of the Rancho had sliding side windows, but for some reason, there were no catches on them to keep them locked. Not only did this mean that they'd move while driving and be particularly annoying in rainy weather, but it also meant that the cars had no security whatsoever. A reviewer at the time said that a child of four holding a toffee apple in each hand could break into the car under five seconds. Hardly high praise for a car that company was pinning its future hopes to. Luckily, Matra took this revelation seriously and added latches as soon as possible, so only a few customers were affected. Number 5. The Mazda 6 Spider Problems it's not unusual to find that insects have made certain parts of your car their home, but a regular regime of cleaning can normally take care of things. With the Mazda 6, though, there was a design feature that attracted unwanted residents to such an extent that the company was ultimately forced to recall all they had sold to make a minor adjustment to prevent it from happening. This model had been released in 2002 as the first of Mazda's new design philosophy of being stylish, insightful, and spirited, and it was the first generation sold across Japan, North America, Europe, and Australia. Three variants were available in each market, and they began to sell well, but by 2011 an unusual problem had been noticed. The smell of gasoline is known to attract yellow sack spiders, and because of the way the internal architecture of the Mazda 6 had been designed, the spiders were finding their way into the vent lines of some customers' cars. There, they would begin to weave webs, and these would restrict the airflow, which in turn would cause a buildup of pressure in the fuel tank, and ultimately could cause cracks and potentially fires. In 2011, 52,000 of the cars were recalled so Mazda could install a spring to prevent the spiders from accessing the vent lines. But this didn't completely solve the issue. A further 42,000 were then recalled to install a new valve and software update that together would either prevent the spiders from getting in in the first place, or if this didn't work, manage the pressure so it didn't build up and cause damage. It's actually a problem all cars could potentially face, and you never know, there may well be a yellow sack spider nest right inside your car right now. Number 4. Lincoln MKC Start-Stop Button Based on a concept that was revealed at the LA Auto Show in 2013, the Lincoln MKC is a compact premium crossover that's built on the Ford Global C platform. Featuring the latest tech available in the interior, it's got an undeniably premium feel to it, and had a bold look too, being available in different trims. As is now common with cars, it featured a push button to turn the engine on and off, and another to engage its sport mode. But the problem with the design was that the sport mode button was mounted on the dashboard directly above the start button. This led to the possibility that if trying to change into sport mode while driving, you could instead accidentally push the button to turn the engine off with potentially disastrous consequences. 
Realizing their mistake, Ford was forced to recall all the Lincoln MKCs so they could relocate the sport mode button, so this was no longer a risk. Luckily, the mistake had been pointed out to them before it caused any accidents, so this was merely a preemptive recall to avoid any future incidents. And despite this recall, the Lincoln MKC went on to sell around 25,000 units per year in the US until it was discontinued in 2019, at which point Ford took what they had learned with this model to produce the Lincoln Crossair, which soon became the brand's best-selling vehicle. Number 3. The VW Fox Rear Seat Movement Produced in Brazil since 1980, the Volkswagen Gol, which was sold in North America as the Fox, is a subcompact car that sold as the ideal vehicle for urban settings and for those where parking space is limited. It's been an incredibly popular model across South America, where it's still sold, having been the top-selling car in Brazil for 27 consecutive years and the most popular in Argentina since 1988. In many ways, this success had been all the more surprising considering the company was forced to do a recall of over 470,000 of them in 2008 because of a scary issue that had become apparent. Any car owner will be used to the way that you lower or raise the seats in the vehicle to grant access to the trunk and to give it more space. But when creating the seats, the designers forgot how people tend to stick their fingers in the gaps to operate them. Frighteningly, eight owners either had their fingers mutilated or severed due to sharp components within the seat's mechanisms, and a further 14 had suffered what was termed as lesser hand injuries. Jeez. Volkswagen installed protective guards to prevent it from happening again, and updated the design so it was no longer a concern, but it would surely make you think twice about any time you try to move the seats in them ever again. Number 2. The Chevrolet Corvair Released across two generations between 1960 and 69, the Chevrolet Corvair was a compact car that was designed in direct response to competitor models like the VW Beetle, and to this day it remains the only mass-produced car manufactured in North America to have a rear-mounted air-cooled engine. During its production run, around 1.8 million of them were made, but there's a reason why no other car has been designed in a similar way since, and that's because the Corvair had notorious handling issues. The tail-heavy layout benefited when extra traction on the rear wheels was needed, such as driving in icy weather. But at other times, particularly with its susceptibility to crosswinds, the weight distribution meant it could experience what the designers called terminal oversteer, where on turns the rear would slide out towards the outside of the turn. This effect was further compounded by the use of a swing axle rear suspension, which would also cause the body to roll and for the understeer to develop in an unpredictable way. And while this was something common to all cars with the swing axle design, these were more common in Europe where drivers were used to knowing how to handle the effects. In North America at the time, driver education programs rarely taught how to handle an oversteer, and all manufacturers tuned the cars to produce understeer instead, meaning that for a car that was aimed at the North American market, the handling mechanics were completely different to what people expected. In the first few years, this led to a number of lawsuits against Chevy because of the danger, and it was only after a redesign, including the addition of an anti-roll bar and later a true independent rear suspension system, that it was made safe on the roads at higher speeds. Number 1. Volkswagen's Defeat Device Now, in most cases, design blunders made by automobile manufacturers are entirely accidental. But there is one instance where it was done very much on purpose in order to circumvent the law, with the realization that car emissions are a major cause of pollution in cities and to the overall damage of the environment, governments around the world have been introducing increasingly strict rules about the levels of pollutants that can be released from each vehicle. This, in theory, would lead to manufacturers changing their engine designs, but Volkswagen did something totally different with their diesel engines. They knew that the testing regime to determine emissions would put the car through a different type of usage than when it's on the road. So they installed something called defeat device software that would detect if it's being tested and change the engine performance as a result. Where a diesel car would pass the laboratory tests, it could then emit up to 40 times as much in real-world driving, putting them far beyond the accepted limits. In September 2015, the United States Environmental Protection Agency issued a notice of violation to Volkswagen, and it turned out that the defeat device software had been installed in as many as 11 million cars around the world and half a million in the United States. With forced buybacks and huge fines, this feature ended up costing Volkswagen many billions of dollars, as well as extreme reputation damage and the knowledge that regulators would be paying extra attention to everything they do in the future, making it arguably the most consequential vehicle design blunder of all time. I'll see you guys next time.
Watch our vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos. Thank you to our channel members.